Today we're doing a spot of gardening, setting up our new veggie garden. So we had to burn off a little bit of scrub that I had piled up here. And the boys are fossicking around in the dirt looking for little insects and other creepy crawlies. You found anything in here, boys? No, no not yet. Not yet? What are you looking for? Worms and veggie boys and kind of millipedes. Yeah, right. What else are you... Is that a worm? Yeah, it's a tiny one. Worms are an invertebrate known as annelids and are vital for the health of the soil by aerating and cycling nutrients through the soil, helping plants to grow. He's smiling around. What is he, Lika? He's a cop. Type of bitchy boy. A what? Type of bitchy boy. A butchy boy? No, a bitchy boy. Type of bitchy Butchy boys or slater bugs are another invertebrate but belong to the largest group of invertebrates known as arthropods. Insect larvae such as caterpillars that turn into moths and butterflies are also a big part of a healthy ecosystem. Other insect larvae, such as this grub, spend a large part of their life underground before transforming into a beetle. Boys, look, 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 watch out, watch out, watch out. Jumping jack nest. I've just disturbed a jumping jack's nest. And jumping jacks are really angry little ants when they're when they've been disturbed. I rang the rake over them without, without knowing they're there, and they're quite painful. When they bite you, it's very painful. Uh, it doesn't last too long, but it can cause an allergic reaction depending on the person. So best to steer clear of them. These little ants can be easily identified by their black bodies and orange antennae and orange mouth parts known as mandibles. If you do get bitten, a bit of stingos, some antihistamines can keep you right. I'd like to also share with you a bush remedy I learnt when in Cub Scouts on how to treat bites and stings. Bracken fern. This bracken fern has a long connective root system and in the root system is a white sap and this white sap, when broken open, and the roots are broken open, this white gooey sap, if you can see it there, when rubbed on a sting or bite, can help prevent the pain and swelling. Boys, tell me, what do you know about jumping jacks? They jump! They do, they jump. They don't forget, they also, if you jump on their nest, they get really angry. They get angry if you disturb their nest and they're quick moving. They're jolty, aren't they? They can jump and they start to climb up your shoes to attack you. So you've got to watch out for them. Oh, here we go. Look, speaking of the devil, look at this here. These fast moving little ants are very defensive and have a distinct way of moving, twitching, jolting and jumping. We're about to move this old sleeper because we're about to put a garden bed here and it appears to be a bull ant nest set up under this sleeper. So when I move the sleeper, there's gonna be bull ants everywhere and Luca's got the camera, he's gonna bring it up close, aren't you, Luca? And we're gonna film some bull ant activity. Okay, here we go. Oh, come over, Luca, come over, come over. Oh my gosh! See who they are, look at them all. Oh my gosh, and there's a lot of butchy boys on there. Watch your fingers, watch your fingers. <laughs> Butchy boys! Whoa, they're all little slater bugs. Look at them all. I want one. Can I have one? We'll save them and we can put them in the garden later. Slug! Oh, there's a big slug there too. Oh, can I keep the slug? Oh, don't touch him. He's all slimy. Watch out for the bullet walking up the stick, mate. Oh, look, they're angry now because we've disturbed their nest. While bull ants are bigger and also defensive of their nest, they are not as aggressive as jumping jacks and tend to mind their own business when left alone. However, 
If bitten by a bull ant, it is also very painful. Despite some ants having a painful bite, they truly are incredible insects. Working together in large numbers, they create super organisms that are vital for the health of our environment and our gardens. The blue ant or blue bottle ant is actually not an ant at all, but a flightless parasitic wasp, also known as a flower wasp. Its metallic blue body and red legs makes it a striking insect. What'd you find? What'd you find? Centipede! Centipede? Cool, let's check it out! A little tiny one. Yeah, let's have a look. Centipedes are another type of arthropod known as myriapods with many, many legs. They can bite, but small species only have a mild venom. Collected them all. We're going to keep them for a couple of days and then we're going to let them go. Yeah. You better, because they belong in the garden. That's their home in the dirt. Right, well, I don't Dad. know where any How about, Dad? Yeah? How about for maybe a week? Not a week. Two months? We can leave them for oh. tonight. We let them go tomorrow. How about that when we finish oh. the garden? That's yeah. for a couple of days. Boys, I think it's nearly dinner time. Is it dinner time, Mads? Nearly. Nearly dinner time. We're going to pack this up, come back tomorrow and finish off our garden beds and see what other little creepy crawlies we can find. Okay, it's day two of our garden bed project and the boys are still hard at it, collecting all the little creepy crawlies that we're going to put back into the garden beds once we've cleared them out and put some new soil in. It's Look time for the one. boys to put in the worms and other little bugs they've been finding as we've been moving things around You're and building these. Yeah, so they're going to create a real healthy soil. Basically, worms yeah. are aerating the soil and helping the, the plant's roots travel through the dirt. Healthy soil is full of billions of live microbes and the small animals like worms and others help promote them. Is that what I want to do, Luca? He wants to go in the soil. I will let him in. Let him in. Go, mate. Watch this. Oh, look what I found. What is this? They're giant millipedes. Oh, what's all that yellow stuff? Oh, smell that. No, from the garden, they're, they're us. <laughs> you, you can't trick you. Yes, you so these millipedes Madeline said she found are actually ours we take care of here yes. at Wildlife Exposure and they're giant rainforest millipedes. The ones we get here are not nearly as big as this, much smaller, and they're a European millipede, been introduced here to Australia, whereas these big beautiful ones are native to the rainforests of Queensland. And this sort of discoloration of Madeline's finger, this brown, that's actually the, like an iodine smelling toxin they spew out of the segments of their body when they're a little stressed to deter a predator. Yeah, it smells pretty bad. Do you want to smell it, Jar? Why not? You want to smell it, Luca? Oh, no, that's I'll smell it, I'll smell it, I'll smell it. Oh, it's strong. Oh, it's ah. really strong. These giant rainforest millipedes, look at that, something as big as my hand, are a myriapod, so closely related to those slater bugs we were looking at earlier that Lukey called uh, Butchy Boys. They're close relatives. Did you know that, Luca? No. These not so small millipedes are vital for the health of rainforests, along with the other decomposers, helping break down plant matter into the soil. 
Hey, Luca, look what I found. Look at that one. Don't touch that one, mate. That's a venomous centipede. Whoa. How cool is that? Can I touch you? No, no, you don't touch that one. He has venomous fangs. Look at that. But we didn't really find him in the garden. This is a giant rainforest centipede. And we don't get these in the garden here in Victoria. We get smaller species. They are all venomous. And this one is extremely painful if it was to bite you. They are another type of myriapod, like the millipedes with many, many legs. Centipedes can be fast moving as they are predators and need to chase down their prey, such as small animals. Some parts of the world, they get so big, they've been known to hang up upside down in caves and catch bats. You know where he stings from? Where? His mouth. Because he's got dangerous fangs. That is brilliant, mate. And how many legs has he got? One, two. Not too close. I don't know how to count them. <laughs> Just how many? Do you know roughly how many? Um, three, I think. He's got a few more than three. I think he's got a few more than two. Centipedes can have up to 100 legs and the dots along the side of the body are used for breathing and they are called spiracles. I hope you enjoyed our Backyard Creepy Crawlies episode. Remember, your backyard is also full of tiny wildlife. So get out there and enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching. And please, if you like what we do, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, take care of yourselves out there and look out for others.